We have a situation here with a slipper orchid that happens quite often with slipper orchids. I'm going to tell you what you can do about it if you want to do something about it, why you don't always have to do something about it. I'm also going to tell you why this happens and the reason may just be a difference of two or three centimeters. But what I'm not going to do is show you how to go about it. So this will just be theory and I will tell you why I'm not doing anything about it. And then you can take that information, look at your situation and judge for yourself whether you want to follow the instructions I'm going to talk you through or just leave it. Incredible when we have a situation like this, if your slipper orchid is doing this on its second fan. That is no bueno. You see, here we have a fan that is growing way too high and we can see root nubbins at the base of it. These root nubbins are going to fail unless we cut this fan off as low as possible all the way down here, as deep into the rhizome as you can get. Take as much of the stem off as you can. Treat it with cinnamon or any kind of desiccating antifungal agent that you prefer. And then you pot the fan up individually to this level just above where you see the root nubbins, which are right here no higher and then you keep the base of the orchid nice and damp so that there is not much water reaching to the surface of the media because the risk of rot is very very high with these orchids it's a fine margin of getting them deep enough to get roots to grow into the pot and not incur any risk of rot this is the problem with these slipper orchids they are terrestrial, semi-terrestrial. And where they normally live, they have an abundance of water. They don't have to be in media. They can just be with their roots on a rock. And there's constant water flowing over the roots and the roots are exposed to the naked eye. However, they are covered by water. So when we do this in cultivation, we are trying to get the roots into the pot and the risk of rot is really high because our slipper orchid structures at the base are very, very tight. And on top of that, quite fleshy. So make sure that if you want to cut off the fan that is rising up above the media and the roots are going to fail before they get into the media, that you take all the necessary precautions to get the orchid in deep enough just to cover the roots, give them a chance, and then keep the surface of the media somewhat dry and water from below with a soak. Now, why does this happen? And why is it the first time it has ever happened to mine, which is a no ID. I bought it at a garden center, didn't know what bloom it was. It was a rescue. And this is the first time it has ever done this. Well, let me tell you what happened this season. The orchid got repotted into a bigger pot. Here comes another little margin where one or two centimeters would make a difference between this happening for the first time as opposed to all the years in the past it's never happened before and that is because it is further away from the light. The size of the pot is much much bigger compared to what she came out of because despite slipper orchids not minding too much being repotted I just don't want to keep doing it every year and I grow in inorganic meat Media, so why should I? So I put her into a very big pot. The difference in the pot size meant that as a consequence, the lead at the back was a smidge further away from the light than it normally would be. Her location has not changed. And that is the difference between fans growing perfectly along the rhizome and the roots getting into the pot without any issues at all. Snug above the media as should be and the one in the back that is further away from the light even though it's only a couple of centimeters so if you see this happening with your slipper orchids you can immediately conclude your slipper orchid is not getting enough light it is reaching and for that reason the stem gets longer and longer because it wants to get closer and closer to the light however the slipper orchid doesn't know any different it thinks it's going to come into an area where there's going to be running water and the roots need to get there quite quickly but the difference in the height here these roots won't make it now if you don't want to cut your fan off of course you have an option you could 
pile up media in and around the fan. Just know that that is very, very risky, even more risky than cutting the fan off because the rot issue will be exponential if we do that. Everything else will be affected if we just pile up media. There's quite a lot of media that would need to get up here stay up here, stay damp in order for that to work. I would not recommend it. If I were to address mine, I would just cut off, as I mentioned, potter up and then keep the water coming in as a soak, never reaching the top of the media. I got right into this video. Hello. <laughs> it's good to have you here. Thank you so much for clicking on it. I hope so far what I'm saying makes sense and that it resonates with you if you have something like this happening in your collection. And if it does or doesn't, either way, it would be wonderful if you would give this video a like. I would appreciate that. So why am I not addressing this? Why am I not going to go in and do something about it? Well, the first reason is space. I'm very limited on space indoors and the winter is coming. So yeah, that would mean a second pot. That would mean the fan is even further away from the light than it is currently. And honestly, this is not one of those fancy schmancy slipper orchids that <laughs> I would like to give away. It is a commercial common kind, so it's not as if there's many takers out there. Another reason I'm not addressing mine is because you can see mine is pretty large. There are two pieces in here, yes, because at the repot, in order to fit it into the pot in somewhat of an acceptable configuration, I did cut the rhizome. So the rhizome, thankfully, is not the climber. It's just that it wouldn't fit if I had left it in one piece. So we've got one piece in the back here doing its thing with three new growths, but there is that much of a rhizome available to nurture this fan. As I'm not changing anything, of course, this fan is not going to grow to the potential that it can if I were to take it off. That is the downside. It may not even bloom. And the next fan that comes out from it, it will also be too high in the pot. So these are the consequences for me not addressing this situation. I'm prepared to take that on board because the other lead is doing quite well. What I will do, however, next year, just as an experiment to show you what I was talking about when the next fan on this one grows, and that is when I will remove it, depending on my indoor space situation. If the circumstances change and I can get my lights back up and running, then I will remove it and I'll show you what I mean. And then also the survival of the second fan is a little bit more guaranteed because it's got this greenery, which will stay. It will live because it's attached to another rhizome with more greenery and more growth coming, then I can remove it and there's a little bit more substance and I don't have the fear of possibly losing the new growth, which will be the fan that's going to grow out of this one. So those are my reasons as to why I am not addressing it. It's a calculated decision, weighing all the odds. What are the benefits? If this orchid were super expensive, super difficult to find, then I would do something about it because these orchids are pricey. And then I would go to the trouble of trying to make it happen so that at least we don't waste a pricey orchid. But under the current circumstances, I am not doing anything about it. I just thought this example, as it happens a lot with slipper orchids, the reasoning behind why, what to do about it, should you do anything about it, I thought it was a nice little situation to have and bring to you in case you had any questions. If your questions had not been answered after all of this, then please ask in the comments where we can discuss certain specifics with regards to your case. Just one more little thing I want to add that the damage on the leaf is not because of this happening. There would be no issues at all. The leaf can grow clean. Let me show you. You see? Clean leaf, damaged leaf. Thrips, not yet. So she's being treated. I just want to really emphasize that this has got nothing to do with the fact that the fan is reaching because it has too low light levels. I appreciate you clicking on this video. I hope that it was helpful. I look forward to seeing you in the comments. I look forward to welcoming you as a new subscriber. Hint, hint, hit that subscribe button. In the meantime, I wish you a beautiful day on that one condition, though please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.